Hello everyone, welcome back to the Orthopedic Tutor channel. Well, today's video will be about the brachial plexus anatomy and I meant to make it as an intro before we go on to the next video which is the brachial plexus injury. So it's best if you watch this whole video till the end. Now, the brachial plexus anatomy is actually a simple kind of anatomy you could memorize it just in like 10 minutes time and even though some of you may think of it as a very difficult kind of anatomy i find that the best trick to do it is to draw this anatomy over and over again so the thing is the more frequently you draw this brachial plexus the better memory, long-term memory it will be in your mind. So the best way to draw this thing is that if you know the divisions of this brachial plexus anatomy, so you can remember it per division. What I meant by division is this one, the Robert Taylor drinks cold beer. Now each of these words represents a specific part of this brachial plexus anatomy. The R represents the roots, the T represents the trunk, and the D represents the divisions, C represents the cords, and B represents the branches. Now once you get a hold of these uh, divisions of this um, brachial plexus anatomy, you could start by drawing from the roots. Now, the roots that makes up the brachial plexus anatomy goes from the C5 down to the T1, but some variants of this may exist where contributions may come from the C4 nerve root and these are called as the prefix type of brachial plexus and if it goes all the way down to T1 then it is known as a postfix type. Now the these nerve roots that comes out of the cervical region is originating as shown in this picture here as these orange structures. Now as they go down towards the upper limb, we could see that it connects, it makes various interconnections with all these other structures and these are actually beneficial for us because these interconnections make it possible for the upper limb to still be partially re-innovated uh, re when one of its roots, well, oh, sorry, one of its roots is injured. As you can see, if, if you could imagine that if this C5 root here is uh, disrupted, we could still see some contribution of the C6 that goes up to the superior trunk. Now, these are very good for us human. Now, the next thing you need to know what is uh, important in this region is the divisions because the divisions is usually located around the clavicle. So in this picture here, the clavicle has been removed. But usually, the division here is uh, situated over at the under aspect of the clavicle. So any injury that goes above the clavicle is called the supraclavicular injury and those that occur below the clavicle is called the infraclavicular injury. And as you can imagine, the supraclavicular injury carries a worse prognosis. Now moving on, you also need to know where the roots come from. As you can see here that the, this is a axial, axial view of the spinal cord and you could see here that there are the posterior rootlets and anterior rootlets which fuse together to form a spinal nerve and these are what we call as a nerve root. Now you could see here that there is an important structure over at the posterior aspect uh, the posterior rootlets shall merge and we could see here that there's a ganglion situated over at the posterior aspect. You need to know that ganglion are actually the nerve cell bodies that is situated outside the spinal, sorry, the central nervous system region, which is the brain and the spinal cord. So this uh, area here contain cell bodies and you could imagine that if this was a vehicle where this is the anterior aspect of the vehicle and these are the posterior aspect of the vehicle, we could imagine that in a normal car or a usual car, not a sports type, you could see that the engine is usually 
located under the hood over the anterior aspect of the car so you could imagine that this anterior aspect here they carry a motoric type of signal and these posterior aspect structures including the posterior root ganglion serves as a conductor for the sensory type of uh, impulses and that is how you remember this and uh, not get mixed up in answering those exams now the next thing you need to know is that when these roots are affected at a different level they also they are known as uh, different terms where if the c5 and c6 is involved it's known as the air palsy but when the c5 until the c7 is involved is known as the air plus pattern and if the lower roots here is involved it's known as a clump palsy now we will go through this on the next video regarding the brachial plexus injury now after you have known uh, where does the brachial plexus comes from the next question is how it forms the root uh, the sorry the branches now as you can see here the upper two roots and the lower two roots shall merge together and when they merge together they form what we call as a trunk with the superior trunk forming from two roots here and the inferior trunk forming from two roots of the C8 and T1 while the middle trunk it goes directly from the C7 now after this trunk has been formed each of them shall give an anterior and also posterior division you could see here that when I change this uh, focus you could see here that the sorry okay you could see that the superior trunk has an anterior and posterior division so is the middle trunk with its anterior and posterior region and the inferior trunk with its anterior and posterior region now when you notice that you could see here that all the things that is located at the posterior or the posterior division of each of these trunk shall fuse and form the posterior cord now these are called as the lateral posterior and medial uh, based on its position on the of uh, towards the axillary artery so the posterior cord is situated over at the posterior aspect of the axillary artery the lateral cord situated on the lateral aspect of the axillary artery and so is the medial cord now when you see here that these uh, cords shall form branches and these branches are what we call as the terminal nerves that goes towards our muscle now you could see here that the lateral and medial cord each of them shall form a huge nerve which is the lateral pectoral nerve and also medial pectoral nerve now for the lateral cord itself it usually goes on to form the muscular cutaneous nerve while the medial cord shall go on to form the ulnar nerve as you could imagine already over at your elbow region the nerve that is situated at the most uh, ulnar side or the medial side would be the ulnar nerve so that is how you remember that ulnar nerve goes from the medial side while on the lateral side you could see that the muscular cutaneous nerve is situated there now for the posterior aspect uh, for me, I would love to remember the posterior aspect the most because when you remember the keyword of posterior, you know that this cord shall innervate all those structures that is usually uh, located at the posterior aspect of the upper limb and has a extension type of function. And uh, inside this cord, we could see that it goes off to form the radial nerve and the axillary nerve. You most probably have known that the radial nerve goes to innervate the muscles that um, provides extension type of movement to the elbow wrist and also the fingers now forming from the lateral and medial cord uh, they each give a branch and they fuse together to form a very big nerve which is called the median nerve remember that the median nerve is a big nerve and it goes from two different sources which is the lateral cord and also the medial cord now knowing these major branches is not enough for you to remember 
when you are studying for a brachial plexus injury because when you are trying to diagnose someone with a brachial plexus injury you need to be very specific with your physical examination which we will go through in my next video uh, of the functions of each of these little branches here we could see that there are several important little branches that goes off from all the way from the roots from the trunks even from the areas of these cords now let's go on to the first important nerve first now as you can see here that the c5 and the c6 they are both merging at the point where we call it as an herbs point and from the area before this intersection here we could see that they form these three different nerves now the first one would be the phrenic nerve now phrenic nerve is actually not only uh, uh, the phrenic nerve comes not only from the c5 but also from the c3 and c4 now the way for you to remember it is that you could use a mnemonic that i use which is the c345 keeps the diaphragm alive now, so when you remember that kind of uh, sentence, we could see here that the phrenic nerve actually innervates our diaphragm and the innervation comes all the way up here from the C3, C4 and C5. Now, the second uh, nerve that comes off from near the root region is the dorsal scapular nerve. Now, we could see here that when you remember the word dorsal scapula, it must then this nerve must innervate the muscles that are situated over at the dorsal aspect which is the posterior aspect and also it innervates the muscles that attaches around the scapula and with this nerve three muscles are innervated which is the rhomboid major minor and also the levator scapula now it is very important to remember these nerves and the muscles that it innervates because it will help you guide your physical examination later on now the next muscle uh, nerve sorry that is also very important would be the long thoracic nerve now the long thoracic nerve they innervate a muscle which we call as a serratus anterior and any dysfunction of this muscle is what gives off a very specific clinical sign of scapula winging now we will go through how to check those winging later on on my next video so be sure to check it out now other nerves that goes off around the herbs point are the suprascapular nerve which innervates two muscles which is the supraspinatus and also infraspinatus just try to remember this keyword of the supra so it goes to the supraspinatus and also the infraspinatus now the other nerve would be the subclavius which obviously goes to the subclavius muscle now this nerve is not readily available for you to check you could not uh, elicit any phys uh, good physical examination which could isolate this uh, muscle so the thing about these two nerve is that this nerve is more dominant and it will help you more when you do a physical examination now why the next question comes is why do you need to check these little branches as you can see here they're actually uh, not a main branch that goes off to form those end nerves but rather they are just little branches that goes out of this main brachial plexus now the answer to that is that when you try to diagnose a brachial plexus injury you actually try to find out whether or not the root is involved because of course if the root is involved it carries a, a worse prognosis now the thing about root is that you cannot isolate the c5 root you cannot uh, pinpoint the c5 root with only one physical examination because as you can see here that the c5 and the c6 it goes all the way together to form all those different end nerves and so the way for you to isolate and to find out whether or not there's an injury that is uh, around this c5 or c6 root is by identifying the functions of these little branches because it is 
uh, it is it has been proven that if there is any injury around uh, or towards these little branches here the long thoracic dorsal scapula or phrenic nerve then most likely the injury injury is indeed around the root area so it gives you an indirect information on whether or not the injury is located at the proximal region now moving on once you have get a hold of these uh, one two three four five branches uh, five nerves that goes around the c5 and c6 the next thing you do is you try to memorize these other branches which is the lateral pectoral nerve and also the medial pectoral nerve which goes at the area of the cord as you can see here at around the division there is no branches now for the cord region we could see that the lateral pectoral nerve it covers the pectoralis major muscle while the while the medial pectoral nerve goes to the pectoralis major and also minor so it goes to two important muscle here now the other thing is the all those important branches that goes off from the cord now from the posterior cord here before it goes on to form the axillary nerve and also the radial nerve we could see that it gives off these three different branches the first is the lower subscapular nerve which goes off to innervate the subscapularis and also the teres major and the thoracodorsal nerve which goes off to innervate the latissimus dorsi and also the upper subscapular nerve which goes to form the subscapularis uh, muscle now as you could probably imagine that where uh, in some uh, references or uh, sorry uh, you might have read this thoracodorsal nerve in some references as the middle subscapular nerve and it is true because the other name for thoracodorsal nerve is indeed the mid subscapular nerve so it goes from the upper mid and the lower subscapular nerve now for go, going on from the medial aspect from the medial cord there's only two branches and these branches are all sensory branches which is the medial brachial cutaneous nerve and also the medial antibrachial cutaneous nerve now that would be all for those for the branches that goes off beside the major end nerves of the brachial plexus now once again there is no uh, simple way for you to remember this other than to draw it so get that pen and paper and start drawing the major uh, part of the brachial plexus first followed by drawing these little branches that i have mentioned before so start by drawing the root the uh, trunk divisions cord and also the branches then finish off by drawing these little nerves now the i'm going to show you this little picture here first this is an anatomical picture of the right axillary region we could see here that the clavicle has been cut off now when exploring a brachial plexus in an injury it's very important to remember that the brachial plexus that is situated over at uh, below sorry below the clavicle would be the division area and any of the structures that goes here this would be the root and also trunk and the structures that goes down to the axillary region would be the cord and also the branches now moving on uh, when we talk about the end nerves we could see here that each of these nerves actually carry sensory and also motoric function so starting off by the muscular cutaneous nerve it because it goes on from the anterior division so it innervates the anterior muscles too and the anterior muscles of course have a important function of flexing the upper limb and also one of the functions for, uh, important functions from the muscular cutaneous nerve is that it innervates the biceps brachii and the biceps brachii is an important supinator of the forearm so there you go they have the three muscles the coracobrachialis the biceps brachii and also the brachialis and don't remember don't forget that the lateral region is also the sensory for the uh, sensory information that goes from the lateral region of the forearm is covered by the musculocutaneous nerve while the medial one if you remember earlier the medial one goes off from the medial cord 
Now for accelerate nav, the accelerate nav itself it only gives off innervation to two important muscles, which is the arm abductor, the deltoid muscle, and also the teres minor muscles. Now you could see here that it, it also provides a uh, sensory coverage for this uh, little area here over at the lateral shoulder region. This region is also known as the batch area. Now the third nerve would be the radial nerve. As you have probably remembered by now that the radial nerve, it comes off from the posterior division of the brachial plexus. And so it innervates all those muscles that functions as an extensor. We could see here that it forms, uh, it gives off innervation to the arm muscles, which is triceps and also the anconius but also the posterior forearm muscles, which includes all those extensors, the abductor pollicis uh, brevis, and also the supinator. But one of its uh, innovation here over at the brachial, uh, mobile watt region is the brachial radialis. Now, uh, the sensory innovation that it covers include the posterior region of this arm, forearm, and also the dorsal aspect of the lateral three digits, except the distal tips now moving on the largest nerve that goes in our upper uh, limb would be the median nerve uh, because it is formed by the uh, by the merge merging of the lateral and also the medial cord now for the median nerve it because it is situated over at the anterior aspect and it comes off from the anterior division of the brachial plexus the muscles that it innervates mostly are pro, uh, flexors, which are shown here, the flexor carpi radialis down to the flexor pollicis longus. And the hand muscles that it innervates are the muscles that goes around the thumb. Now the thumb region is also known as the thinner region, which is shown here. And the ones that goes and at the opposite of this thinner region uh, or below the little finger here is known as a hypothenar region. Now the thinner muscles is innervated by the median nerve while the hypothenar muscles are innervated by the ulnar nerve. We could see here that besides the thinner muscles at the hand it also innervates the lumbricals which are the two lateral lumbricals. Now for the sensory, re sensory coverage it also covers the palmar aspect and also the dorsal tips of the lateral three and a half digits. As you could remember earlier that from the, the radial nerve covers this dorsal aspect of the hand except the tip region. Now moving on is the last nerve which is known as the ulnar nerve. Now the ulnar nerve also goes to the anterior aspect and so it also innervates the flexors. Uh, so it goes off to innervate the flexor carpi ulnaris which is situated here at the medial aspect of the forearm and also the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus. Now the hand muscles are mostly innervated by ulnar nerve because uh, the thinner region is already covered by the uh, median nerve so the rest is covered by the ulnar nerve as you can see there's a lot of muscles here that is covered by the ulnar nerve now for the sensory coverage itself now the sensory coverage includes the dorsal and also the palmar region of the medial one and a half digit so this is all this area here is primarily covered by the ulnar nerve now, once you get a grip of all the functions of these different nerve, you can easily determine the region where the brachial plexus is injured in your patient. Um, and it's also very important to remember all those muscles or key muscles that each of these nerves innervates because by identifying any disruption in that muscle's function, you can isolate the location of the injury of the nerve. Thanks for watching the Orthopedic Tutor channel. Don't forget to subscribe and watch the brachial plexus injury video that is coming soon. Thank you so much.